Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be talking about desensitizing your dog. In this video I'm primarily going to be covering desensitizing your dog to touch, but you can also desensitize your dog to sounds and certain visual stimuli. There are several reasons why you should practice desensitizing your dog. One of the first ones that's most common is children. Children do not know how to behave around dogs. They pet them, they play with them, and they may say, for example, pull on their ear or pet them too hard. Or if your dog is used to being petted and rubbed rather than patted and a child comes up and starts patting them, they may think they're being hit. So they can overreact, they can get scared, they can try and run away, or unfortunately, in some cases, they may snap. Another common one is for grooming and cleaning. So if your dog is dirty and you want to groom them, if their dog is very iffy with having their feet touched, with being picked up, with being restrained in certain positions, they again can be very snappy. Some groomers will not groom certain dogs. Usually you'll find someone, but if you yourself are walking your dog and they get dirty and you just want to give them a rinse, you obviously don't want to risk getting bitten in the process. Along the same line of thought, if you're walking your dog and you walk past some glass that you didn't realise was there until you're past it, if your dog is very iffy with having their feet touched, how are you meant to pick up their foot and check to make sure they're not cut? You obviously don't want to end up risking yourself getting bitten if you're just trying to make sure your dog is okay. And then there's the unfortunate fact that dogs do get old. So when they're older, they may need eye drops, ear drops, their teeth to be clean, tablets. So you need to have them okay with you touching their face, restraining them in certain positions before they get to that point so you have time to work on it and reassure them instead of someday they just randomly are being grabbed out of nowhere and not knowing what's going on and if you don't do it properly or you're stressing them out too much you risk missing some medication and things like that that could be very very important. Ideally you should start doing the desensitizing of touching your dog everywhere when they are small. As soon as you get them make it part of play, make it part of something so they're used to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with feet. So their little feet, we need to be able to desensitize them first. When desensitizing your dog's feet, you're going to want to basically hold onto them, touch them, put your fingers between their toes. You should be able to hold onto one little individual paw pad and be able to move that toe around. You should be able to touch the nails, rub around the nails and bring an object close to the nails that is not something that's usually near their feet. So for example, I sometimes when I'm holding the foot, moving the leg around, I'll bring my phone really close to it. And it's just because when you're clipping their nails, or if they have something in their foot and you're putting a torch close to it, or if there's an injury that you want to take a picture of so you can show your vet what the injury looked like when you first noticed it, it's important that your dog doesn't think, oh God, this is something terrifying, what are you doing? And either try run away, stress themselves out by trying to escape, or end up biting you by accident because they're not going to think, oh, it'll be really fun to bite you. They're going to think, oh God, I need to defend myself. I'm going to do whatever I can to get away because they're scared and that's just the way it is. So similar to like you see I'm doing here, I'm holding onto the foot when she tries to take it away. I will let her, but then I hold onto it again. So I'm taking my hand, I'm putting my thumb on top of the nails, I'm pinning them, I'm wiggling the foot around. She's not too happy, so she's putting her face down, she's not comfortable. This was her taking her foot away, I wasn't bending it. So earlier I let go, whereas this time I'm going to bring it back out. She's not too happy, but she doesn't try to pull it away again, so I'm going to let go of it, I'm going to move it to one side, pet it a bit, and then move on to the other foot entirely. This shouldn't be a punishment, it shouldn't be something that they have no choice about because if they're injured they have no choice and the point of this is to build them up to a point where they're not going to see it as being restrained, they're just going to see it as, oh well we do this sometimes, that's fine. Because this is a teaching moment as well, you don't want to leave it being just, oh I'm going to touch your feet until you get sick of me. You're going to pet them in between, you're going to play with them in between, you're going to make it like a game where if I hold your foot and you don't take it away from me for two whole Mississippis, then I will let go of your foot and I'm going to pet you and play with you. If you then let me do it again, but for three Mississippis, then I'm going to play with you even more. Make part of it the game. Haha, <laughs> I got you. You just lost the game. As you can see here, when I'm holding her foot and I'm shaking it, she's kind of licking her lips. That is a sign of stress. That's a sign she's not too happy, but she didn't do anything. She didn't bare teeth. She didn't try to get me. So therefore, I started petting her belly again. Here, when I grabbed her foot, you can see her lip did go up for a minute, but she didn't do anything again, so I let go, and I petted her, and I'm playing with her, and I'm making it part of a game again. 
try to discourage if you're holding the foot and they're trying to then chew on your hands because that's basically what we're trying to avoid here. We're trying to avoid her thinking that it's fun to grab you when you're grabbing the foot. Make sure if they've got dew claws like these that you mess with them as well because those ones are really difficult to get them to stay calm about when you're trying to clip them. After the feet, there's the mouth. So for the mouth, you've got the lips, you've got the teeth, you've got the nose, the muzzle and the neck. So all of this I count as the mouth area. So when I'm playing, sometimes what I'll do is I'll loop my finger in a little hook and I'll hook one of her canines and I just very gently tug on it. I'm not pulling the teeth out of her head. I'm just tugging on it as part of the game. So she's used to the sensation of me grabbing around her mouth like dogs when they play with each other. If you've ever seen two dogs playing with each other, what they do is they open up their mouths and they kind of chew on each other's faces, they'll kind of snap near each other's faces, and it's all part of the game, there's no aggression meant by it, but this sort of rough play is exactly what you should be able to do as well. I kind of do this in passing nearly every evening when I'm just petting Beauty. I could be petting her for 10-15 minutes and then I'll play with her nose like this. Or I could be petting her for 5 minutes and then I'll just grab a foot and I'll just hold on to it while I'm watching TV or whatever. It's just things to get her used to this happening in the middle of petting, in the middle of play, so that if I'm out on a walk or if I'm petting her at home and I notice something, I can then stop playing and go, oh, hold on now a second, and check for a mole or a skin tag, a cut, a rash, whatever may be appearing. Again, just back to feet for a minute. If I've got her foot like this, I should be able to separate the toes, move them around so the nails are going apart. I should be able to put my thumb right in the middle because this is how you hold the toe when you're kind of clipping the nail to keep it separate. And so she doesn't particularly care because I do this so often. And for lips, make sure to grab them every now and then, just kind of move them around. Put your hand inside their mouth if you feel you are safe to do so. And this just sort of mimics what children are often going to do. If they don't know better and they stick out their hand, a dog is going to be like, oh, that hand smells like food. It smells like things the child has touched. So they're going to lick it and the child's going to stick their hand into the dog's mouth. You saw earlier how I played with her normally, whereas now I'm kind of holding the nose and I'm holding it to the point of just a little bit past where she's comfortable. So she kind of tried to take her mouth away. Then she stopped and she licked and I let go. Now I do the exact same with the bottom jaw where I'll just kind of hold it for a second like in play and I'll let go again. And that way she knows that I'm just playing, it's okay, she's going to get her face back. But I am getting her used to me holding it for a second. If when I'd held that she'd tried like running backwards or escaping, I would have let go. But then I would have repeated the process and tried to get it for that amount of time or a little bit longer the next time. Each dog has got different cues for playtime. With Beauty, you can't hear it right now, but I'm making a really strange sort of garbled, growly squeak noise. Because that's the way of me telling her that I'm trying to play. Because she doesn't, she doesn't know how to, how to do that unless I'm specifically saying, hey, I'm playing now. So I'm doing that while slowly approaching her face with my hand. And then I just maul her face and her neck and squish her. And she's like, yeah, yeah, this is playtime. This is great. When I'm not doing it in play and I want to check on her, I will still grab her in the exact same way. But she doesn't particularly reciprocate by chewing on me or playing. She'll just kind of wait it out because she knows I'll stop and then I'll play. Here's a good example of when she wasn't too happy. You can see that I have her mouth, I'm messing with her teeth. That's fine to a point. I let go. And even though I'm messing, she's only licking. She's not trying to play back. So I kind of went, okay, she's not too happy with that. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to squish her nose a bit. And then I, we, we just petted for a while. And then she's happy out. So it's literally just kind of pushing your dog to a point where they might be uncomfortable. And then bringing it back so they know that they don't need to be. Honestly, it can kind of, I, I don't want to say bully your dog, but it kind of, it seems a bit mean at times because you're kind of poking at them, prodding at them, pulling at them, but it's not for the sake of making them uncomfortable. It's for the sake of letting them know that even though this situation right now may look like it's going to be uncomfortable, it isn't. And it's okay because then it stops and it goes away. One time this has been really useful for me is grabbing her neck and stuff. She used to not like that at all. She would proper go for me. She, I had to have a collar with a handle on it at times so I could grab her and hold her by that because she would try bite me. But it was necessary for me to be able to grab hold of her scruff because I was giving her her insulin injections each morning. And I can't do that without grabbing a handful of skin from her neck to inject the needle into. 
And unfortunately, when I got her, she was already diabetic. Therefore, I had no lead up period to that to get her used to me messing with her neck. She just had to deal with it. And it was difficult for her. It was unpleasant for her. And because of that, she had to have a collar with a, ha with a handle on it. She had to be muzzled for the first month or so because she would try and escape. She'd try run away. She'd try bite. And that obviously couldn't be allowed because I needed to give her her medicine. When desensitizing, don't do a session of desensitization. Just have it be a casual thing that happens when you're petting, when you're playing, that they can get used to it over as long a period of time as possible. So they don't need to deal with stress in the short term if something did happen. Next is ears. We love ears. Ears are floppy. Ears are adorable. They use them for hearing and showing their emotions. And they are the one thing that children love to hang out of. Along with children being a risk, other dogs are a risk. They can get them nicked. They can catch them in things. They can get ear infections. They can get all sorts. So they need their ears to be as desensitized as possible. With Beauty, even though it looks a bit bad per se. She's just got a lot of loose skin. So I'm just gently taking them. I'm holding them. I'm moving them. I'm tugging on them just a little bit. I'm putting them in circles. I'm kind of just petting her in between so she knows it's not a bad thing. She doesn't particularly care at all because any sort of affection is her favorite thing. So I can just put them inside out. I can mess with them. I can flop them around and she just sees it as petting. It's no problem. So try and aim for something along those lines. And then last but not least is the entire body. So petting itself. Some people pet gently like this. Other people like to kind of scratch. Other people sort of grab the skin and move it around. And others will pat the dog. Don't stick to one if possible. Because some people come up and be like, oh, your dog is so nice. Can I pet them? And you say yes. And they pat your dog and your dog's like, oh my God, I'm being beaten to death. And even though they're not in any pain, they're going to hear the noise of kind of slaps and they're going to be like, oh no, this is a scary new noise. This is a person I don't know. And I am upset. Even if you've got a very, very tiny dog, take two fingers like a tiny little hand and give them little pats all over their body. Little pats that kind of make, make a noise, but not like slapping your dog. You, you'll, you'll know, you'll know, like a proper nice, you're a good dog, pat, pat. When petting your dog, pet their head, their neck, their chest, their back, their left side, their right side, their shoulders, their armpits, their flanks, their inner legs, their stomach, their ass, all of it. Especially small dogs tend to be very sensitive about their feet and their belly because they're so low to the ground that people are only ever petting their backs and sides. And big dogs tend to be really bad with their feet being messed with because and being picked up because they're too big to be picked up anymore and they're not good with their feet being off the ground. Each dog will have something in particular they're a bit iffy about. With Beauty, it's her elbows. So as you can see, she has calluses here. I've talked about them before. They're very well healed up at this point. They're fairly dry. They're fairly fine. But she doesn't like me patting near them. So her looking at me now like that was not originally play. She was looking to see what it was I was doing. Her calluses used to hurt her a lot, and therefore she's a bit cautious about them. So I've gotten to the point that I can touch them. I can lift her elbow like I was doing earlier. I could put my hand underneath her armpit, but I can't particularly pat beside them without her turning and giving me a look. And it's kind of a look of, mm, please don't. But considering I was never able to touch near that area before, this is progress, so I am completely happy with it. Although I do not work as a dog groomer, I am a qualified dog groomer. And the things that I saw most often were dogs with reactivity to their feet being touched, their bellies being touched, having their tail lifted, having their back legs moved around and their back end kind of touched, washed, dried because they felt exposed and they weren't used to it. Just practice a little bit of desensitization every day, be it a feet today, lips tomorrow, ears the next day, so on and so forth, just while playing and petting and your dog will be completely fine over time. It's better to have your dog used to this and never need it than to suddenly have a dog snap at a child or get scared because a groomer dried their butt. It's just better to have it. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will do my absolute best to help. 
and thank you very much for watching.